Hello ladies and gentlemen welcome to Triple N Media I am Dr Nick Nickam and this is cardiology lecture series and all our programs are video stream through YouTube and please please do subscribe to our YouTube channel now the feature presentation Hello ladies and gentlemen welcome I am Dr Nick Nickam and today we're going to learn something about uh, pulseless VT VFib algorithm when we are talking about uh, pulseless VT VFib algorithm we also need to keep in mind uh, another aspect of cardiac arrhythmia that we see and that is uh, asystole or uh, pulseless electrical activity first we are going to focus on vt vfib algorithm and then we are going to look at asystole or pulseless electrical activity and see how these two are interrelated during the course of any cardiopulmonary resuscitation for that matter let's assume that you have been called in to see a patient uh, uh, on the floor who has collapsed you walk in the room the patient is lying in the bed you do a quick assessment then you start chest compressions you yell for help when the help comes in they start the patient on oxygen attach the monitor defibrillators now you have an ekg monitor the next question is do we see a rhythm that is shockable or not shockable this is where we have to make a de- this is a decision making point we have to decide do we have a rhythm that we can shock if so what is the rhythm most often in a patient with a cardiac arrest the rhythm that we are going to see that can be shocked would be like uh, ventricular tachycardia or fine or coarse ventricular fibrillation on the other side we have Uh, an asystole or pulseless electrical activity which is represented by a fine straight line or by what we call as the agonal rhythm once we have identified a rhythm that we can shock our next step would be to immediately deliver 200 joules biphasic shock right after the shock we continue with the cpr for two more minutes without any interruption in the meantime the other assistants will be attending to the airway oxygen checking pulse things like that after two minutes we again reassess the rhythm if the rhythm is shockable then we proceed further if the rhythm is not shockable if the rhythm is asystolic or uh, agonal then we going to go through the asystole or pulseless electrical activity which we'll talk uh, a few minutes later so assuming this this rhythm is shockable we go to the next phase and that is again deliver a prompt shock 200 joules biphasic energy continue with the cpr for two more minutes administer epinephrine and make sure the airway is adequate you can even start the patient on capnography to see how well your cardiopulmonary resuscitation is going on after you have continued this for 2 minutes doing all the above listed things again we check for the rhythm if the rhythm is shockable we continue with the vt vfib protocol if the rhythm is not shockable uh, if it's asystole or pulseless electrical activity we're going to follow the asystole pulseless electrical activity algorithm let's assume that you have delivered the shock every time you deliver a shock the next step is immediately resuming the cardiopulmonary resuscitation without any delay whatsoever so let's get to the next phase here uh, after you have delivered the shock you do the cpr for 2 minutes administer epinephrine which can be given as 1 mg iv bolus followed with 20 ml of normal saline flush and this can be repeated every 3 to 5 minutes 
If there is a, appears to be either a ventricular tachycardia or ventricular fibrillation, we can start this patient on amiodarone intravenous bolus, 300 milligrams, followed by 150 milligrams uh, uh, a few minutes later. And we also need to address the underlying uh, situations. If this rhythm is not shockable, I said we go to asystolic phase. You continue the same process here. You, you continue the same process by delivering high performance CPR along with cardiac monitoring, defibrillation, antiarrhythmics. So we go through this cycle. And any time the rhythm becomes uh, the non shockable, then we go to the asystolic phase. So let's look at the asystolic algorithm and then we see how these two are interrelated. As I said in the beginning, when you are in the middle of a cardiac arrest, these two rhythms, the ventricular shockable rhythm and asystole or agonal ventricular rhythm are going to come in and out. As a result, we need to know what needs to be done when we see a change from ventricular fibrillation to asystole or when it goes from asystole to shockable rhythm. Okay, now we have this asystolic or pulseless electrical activity algorithm. If this is the first rhythm that we identify during cardiopulmonary resuscitation, we get an IV, first continue the CPR, you get an IV and deliver epinephrine one milligram IV and then repeat it every three to five minutes. Again, the assistants can address the airway and uh, capnography, things like that. After two minutes of uh, successful cardiopulmonary resuscitation, you again recheck the rhythm. After two minutes of uh, high performance CPR, you evaluate the rhythm again. If the rhythm has gone from asystole or agonal rhythm to VTAC or ventricular fibrillation, then we come back to the VTAC or VFib protocol. If the rhythm is not shockable and we are still in asystole or agonal ventricular rhythm, then obviously we continue with the CPR, look for any reversible causes and then check the monitor two minutes later to see what the underlying rhythm is. Again, if the rhythm is uh, VFib or VTAC, then we can get back to VT, VFib algorithm and continue with electrical shock, CPR, epinephrine, amiodarone as needed. However, if, if the, the person remains in asystole or agonal rhythm, after multiple attempts at cardiopulmonary resuscitation, you evaluate the rhythm and you treat the underlying causes. If there is spontaneous return of circulation, then we go to post-CPR management. But after 30 to 40 minutes of uh, high performance, CPR, if you're not able to establish a, a rhythm that can sustain blood pressure, maybe it is time to call it quit. As you can see, the chart looks extremely complex, but if you understand the basic concepts that during cardiac rest, we see ventricular fibrillation or ventricular tachycardia, which can see, this ventricular tachycardia or fibrillation can swing to asystole and with CPR, it may swing back to ventricular fibrillation or ventricular tachycardia. And we may see this seesaw movement of the cardiac rhythm for several minutes. Either you are able to establish a stable supraventricular rhythm with sustainable blood pressure, or you will end up with basically a asystole or agonal ventricular rhythm when it is time to call quit. So ladies and gentlemen, this is an overview of uh, how we proceed dealing with a patient with uh, VT, VFib during cardiac arrest and how we switch our protocol based on whether we are having a VTAC, VFib or asystole or pulseless electrical activity. I hope this has been useful to you. 
Thank you for watching. I am Dr. Nick Nickam. Thank you so much for watching our program and please do subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you would like to support this program, you can look for the dollar sign on the right hand side of your browser and support in any way you possibly can. Again, thank you so much for watching this presentation and until next time, I am Dr. Nick Nickam.